Good evening, everyone. Nice to see you again. Uh, thank you for being here. The uh, the mansion of the way that you that you talked about, the Valdos, the Valdos. I don't know what would you call it. Beautiful place. I, I, I was there once, and uh, to get to this place, um, you go through a pretty rough town. You know, it's a little scary. Um, especially if you're a gringo and you don't speak Portuguese, right? You're glad your wife is with you that, that knows the language, yeah? Um, <clears throat> but as you pull up to this place, you, you, you feel the energy and, and you cross through the threshold and you're transcended into another place. And it started off as uh, houses. And he had mothers in the house and, and children in the house. And one house, then two houses, I think 26 houses at one time. They don't sleep there anymore. They don't live there anymore. Thousands of kids have gone through this, and it's just amazing. Uh, at schools, hospitals, um, an orchestra, uh, a clinic, it's just, just amazing. Um, so vocational. vocational school, yeah, they, they train um, uh, the kids there. Um, and it's, it's just amazing to go, to go visit and, and just aspire to try to, to, try to, go, to do good things. And it ties in really well uh, to the topic tonight, uh, as did the reading from Happy Life. I, I can't take any credit for the content. I got this completely from uh, the Spirit's book and the Gospel. Um, it ties into the reading from Happy Life in the sense that uh, um, what, what's, what's really ours and what's really important? What, what do we take with us and, and, and what don't we take with us? And, and when we think of property, what do we think of? Usually think of money, right? So this talk will be a lot about money tonight. Right? What is that? Gold doubloons. I can't take any credit for the slides either. Um, there was a, a woman here some time ago. Her name was uh, Bernadette Leal, and I borrowed these slides uh, from her. So I did nothing for this other than put the PowerPoint together. But we think about money, and when we think about money, what do we think about? All right, we think about buying things, right? Houses, cars, education, food, maybe donating to the mansion of the way. We think about uh, uh, beauty, right? That's associated with money. Uh, a lot of the people we, we read about in magazines and online are, are beautiful people with money. And we think about power, right? Because if you have lots of money, uh, you usually have lots of power. What's that? I think about I don't have it. <laughs> You're still a powerful man, Tom. So don't forget that. All right? <laughs> but those are common things that we think about when we talk about property and, and we talk about money. Um, and that's not to say these things aren't real and, and to some extent perhaps important. Um, but, but how important and, and how, how uh, essential to our, to our progression. Because we know that uh, we're eternal, right? Uh, our spirit lives forever. This body that uh, I have right now is going to perish one day, but my spirit, your spirit, will live forever. Any money that I have left when I, when I die uh, doesn't go with me, right? Maybe I leave it to my relatives or to charity, what have you, but it's really, not, it's really not mine, right? I'm just entrusted with it right now. But what do I do with it? What do you do with it, right? How, how important is money? Well, we, we can't eat without it. We, 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 don't, we don't live on family farms anymore, right? We don't grow our own vegetables. We don't slaughter our own meat, right? So we gotta buy food. Uh, we need a house, we need some place to live, right? Whatever shape or form that takes. Um, clothes aren't cheap, right? You gotta, you gotta buy clothes. Um, car, right? Transportation, whatever, motorcycle, bus. You gotta, you gotta pay for it. And then, you know, most of us have hobbies, right? You gotta pay for those. But essentially, money sustains our needs and our wants. Um, ideally, we worry more about what we need as opposed to what we want, but, uh, but we'll talk about that more. Uh, in a little bit. So money, as much as my dad says this all the time, um, he says money, and I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't conform. To, I'm not saying it's wrong, but, but it, it's how I was raised, and and I see his point. But I've changed, I've changed my philosophy on it a little bit. My, my dad's famous for saying money isn't everything, but it sure beats whatever's in second place, right? Uh, and that's that's our 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 view on money in, as a society in a lot of ways, and uh, um, we'll talk more about that. So when you have tons of money, or money in abundance, when you have enough or more than enough, uh, materially you, you want for nothing, right? Everything you need you can have, you can buy it because you got the money. New house, new car, nice clothes, you know, you get the new iPhone or the, the new tablet, 
uh, new gadgets, all this uh, uh, virtual reality stuff. You can buy your loved ones or friends fancy gifts. And it's easy to donate money when you've got tons of dough, right? Very easy when money's in abundance. What about uh, the, the downside to it, right? Everybody thinks being rich is, is the cure, all right? But is it? How easy is it to lose your perspective? Right? Uh, right? When you, very easy, right? When money's just flowing. Um, would you compromise your values for more? Mm -hmm. huh? Steal, take advantage, step on people to get more. How about the stress of losing it? How many of you ever, well, you don't have to raise your hand, but the question is, how many of you have ever been broke? Mm -hmm. I have, twice mm -hmm. in my life. <laughs> Depending on who you talk to, I'm close to doing it again. <laughs> but I got it under control. <laughs> um, the, the point is, there's a lot of stress when you got stuff, right? You got kids, you got a house, you got a mortgage, you got a business. There's stress, and God forbid, what if I lose my job? What if my business plan doesn't work? What if, what if I can't cover the note, right? What if I make the mistake and, and I lose it all? There's a lot of stress with that, right? That's why I have gray hair, right? Because I worry about some of these things. Um, this one's big for me, the, the creeping lifestyle, right? Um, creates false needs. Um, I can remember uh, in college, right, even after college, I, I lived in, a, in an apartment. I had no debt. I, I drove a, a car that was paid, you know, just all these different things. Right? I didn't have cable, right, or if I did, it was a luxury, right. Now, there's things in my life that I don't need, but I expect, right. I got used to, it used to be a luxury, and now it's like, oh, man, can I live without this or can I live without that? Um, I'm doing better, right? I am, I am doing better, but we get this creeping lifestyle where, where what used to be a, a luxury is now a necessity. Um, and it just creates this reality that uh, requires uh, support and money to take care of it. So what about the opposite? Let's say you don't have enough money, like, like me a few times in my life, right? Um, where it's in short supply. Look at the upside. It creates resourcefulness, right? If you don't have all the money you want or need, um, you really have to be resourceful. You've got a, you've got a budget, you've got to go without, you've got to decide what's important. Those basic necessities, like just feeding your kids or putting clothes on your kids or, or maybe getting them a birthday present, right? Just, just having just enough, you know, trying to find ways to, to meet your necessities. And simple things create entertainment. I, 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 I don't know if I laugh or cry sometimes about these things, but how many of you have, have kids and on Christmas you, 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 got, you bought presents and you spent some money and, and you find they're going to love this? And then next thing you know, they're playing in the empty boxes, right? Kids got it made, man. They don't, they, they don't need anything. Give them an empty box and some, and some wrapping paper and they build castles or forts or, or things, right? They don't need a whole lot, right? Simple things create entertainment. When I was a kid growing up in Miami, my dad uh, worked two jobs to, to support us. I remember not seeing him during the week. I would, uh, I would be asleep when he left for his first job, right? And I'd be asleep again when he got home from his second job. On the weekends, though, we hung out, right? On Saturdays, he'd take me to Miami International Airport. We didn't walk around the, the terminal or park the car in, in, the, in the parking garage. We'd, we'd sit on the side of the access road, and he had this little radio that would pick up the tower, air traffic control, or the pilots, there's two different channels, right? And we'd just sit there, we'd watch the planes and, and we'd listen to the air traffic control, talk to the pilots. That was so cool, it was so much fun. So a simple thing, it took a little bit of gas and a lot of time, right, just hanging out with my dad. But that was awesome, I thought that was great, right? Um, and then obviously, uh, mom still tells stories about how, how she, she stretched a dollar, right? Because uh, she had four kids and, and uh, you know, she had to create priorities. So when it's in short supply, it can really bring out the best of us, right? Or can it, uh, can it bring out the worst, right? The stress we talked about. If you don't have enough money to pay the rent, right, uh, you got to worry about the landlord knocking on the door with a, with a pink slip or, or uh, you know, an eviction notice. Um, if you don't have enough money, uh, you can't necessarily apply to schools. You can't necessarily have access to opportunities. Maybe you have to, to, to go out of state for an interview, uh, but you can't buy the airplane ticket, right? You don't have the opportunities if you don't have cash. Um, healthcare is huge, right? We spend a fortune on healthcare in this country. Um, and if you don't have the cash, um, you, you don't have the insurance. Very difficult, right, if you don't have the money. 
um, services, uh, you don't have the same access. And, and I, I remember being broke and, and not thinking very highly of myself, right? I had a very low self-perception, my esteem was lowered for a little bit, then I got back on my feet, right? But you don't, you don't think uh, as good about yourself if you don't have money. And then um, I haven't resorted to this, but, but the temptation is there, right? If you don't have enough money, what will you do to feed your kids? What will you do to, uh, to get money, right? It can lead to all kinds of things. Think about all the, all the crazy things you read about, people doing, right? Schemes that make millions or, or try to make millions. And you think about the folks doing those things. If they took the same brain power, and applied it to good. Imagine how much they could accomplish, right? Um, but um, money in short supply has, you know, pros and cons. Just, uh, just like uh, having too much. And 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 here's the simple question, right? With, with or without money, would you agree we face the same challenges? We have the same needs, right? We got to eat. We got to sleep. We need a house. We need transportation. Um, so, do you think money is the root of all evil, or or does necessity breed in for in, in innovation? Which side of the argument do you land on? And there's an argument to be made for either sides of those coins. Um, so let's talk about money uh, being the root of all evil. You, I can remember as a kid, people quoting the Bible, right, supposedly. Money's the root of all evil, right? And I thought that. I said, well, money must be bad. Um, but is it? What, what does the Bible, the Old and the New Testament, we'll look at a couple of scriptures here. Um, whoever loves money, right, from Ecclesiastes, right? Whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. There's one example. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. These are all from, obviously from the, um, the, the Bible, but I, we're taken from examples in, in the gospel according to spiritism. You cannot serve both God and money. Timothy, right, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Right, caused themselves a lot of trouble chasing the dollar. What's the common theme there? I didn't hear any one of those say that money's bad. Did you? It's not bad. Property's not bad. Money's not bad. It's okay. Don't beat yourself up if you got a little bit of dough. But the pursuit of it, right, can lead to bad actions. I've been in practice for 17, 18 years, right? and, and uh, I work with primarily senior citizens. And I've seen, I've seen all kinds of abuse out there towards gra grandma and grandpa, right? But, but um, what I've noticed in my career um, is if I was chasing money, if I was doing things for the money, it opened the door to temptation. And I, and I always caught myself. And I also realized that as long as I was chasing it, um, I never had enough. So I've been, it's been really easy for me not to take advantage of people in pursuit of money. I'm, I'm happy for that. But it, it has the potential, right? If you, if you really are chasing money, you can, do, you can do all kinds of stuff to give it. It also said in there, right, that our love leads us astray, our love of money, right? If money is our pursuit, if money is our goal, um, it's really easy to get off track. And, the, and, the, and the, the last common theme here is money serves a purpose, but it should not be our purpose, right? There's nothing wrong with making money. There's nothing wrong with earning a living. There's nothing wrong with being successful. But our purpose should be to serve, right? And if you serve people and help others, and, um, and, that's, and that's abundant, there's nothing wrong with the byproduct of, of, of being successful. So don't beat yourself up. Make sense? Yes. Awesome. So let's talk about the law of preservation. And what we're told, right, is one of our purposes is self-preservation. It's by staying alive and living each life that we interact with our material world and evolve spiritually. Money's simply a tool, right? It's needed in this life for self-preservation. If we lived centuries ago, um, maybe we would have bartered. Maybe we would have uh, raised our own stuff, right? Uh, but money's a tool in this life. We need money uh, to help preserve ourselves, our family, and, and our species. It's a means for living. Uh, the Spirit's book, question 704, asks, since God has given human beings the need to stay alive, does God always provide them with the means of doing so? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And if they do not find them, it's because they do not understand them. Think about that for a minute. We have a perception of what we need. 
to survive, right? We have this, this, this want, if you will, uh, this goal, right? But we may not be getting traction with that because it's, we don't really understand what's important. So we have to create our values, right? You have to set our values appropriately. Compare what we need or what we want to what we need. God could not have given humans the need to stay alive without also giving them the means. So wherever we are on our journey, wherever we are um, in this life, um, there's a solution if we, if we aren't where we need to be. They go on to say that uh, the Creator has caused the earth to produce in such a way as to provide for the needs of all its inhabitants. For only that which is necessary is useful. The superfluous never is. So does everybody in the world appear to have what they need? No, right? There's, there, there's definitely some disparity there. Um, that's not because it hasn't been provided. It's because we haven't, we haven't kind of helped each other in, in some of the ways that we could. Or we haven't done our part individually, right? Um, there's a couple different, I don't, I don't have the numbers for you, but there's a couple different sources in the Spirit's book, a couple different questions where, where um, it talks about um, that the earth has everything it needs for everybody. And, and it's not up to, to God to, to distribute that evenly. They don't, they don't profess or suggest that we should be, um, you know, socialist or free market. But they simply say that because there are people that are lacking, it's simply because they've, they've either put themselves in that situation or, uh, or in a circumstance as a test uh, to help lift them up. Uh, but there definitely is everything we need provided for us. We just haven't understood it yet. We haven't figured it out completely. So necessary, right? Whether we have money or not, right? We all have the same basic needs. And what are they again? Food, shelter, security, right? Same. Whether you, whether you live in Orlando or you live in Egypt or you live in Brazil, we all have, have those basic needs. Um, and for good or bad, right? Money is how we fulfill those basic needs. This pursuit leads us to, to, to uh, temptation, and that temptation tests us. How many of you um, are thankful for your tests and your obstacles uh, when you face adversity? Awesome. I saw some hands go up. Um, I, um, I'm getting in the habit of, of instead of uh, getting mad and cursing, right, um, um, when things go wrong, right, when, when mistakes happen. I'm simply now saying, thank you, God, right? It's another opportunity to learn, right? Um, how could I have done this differently? How could I, how could I overcome this obstacle? Um, and it's, it's awesome. Uh, anything that doesn't seem to go right uh, is an opportunity to, to grow, and uh, it's helping me. Tests are good. And, and the real important message here, too, another important message, I said, not, not the, but one, is, is our actions create our consequences. Think about where you are today or other points in your life. And, 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 and perhaps there were challenging times, perhaps there were easy times. Just ask yourself about why you were in that situation. What Spiritism definitely teaches, one of our tenets, right, is cause and effect. Um, no matter where we are, We've put ourselves there, whether that's in poverty, whether that's in, uh, in wealth, whether that's with good health or, or, or no health, right? Um, it's a result, a direct result of choices we've made in this life as well as choices in previous lives. Not just choices that, that we made, but maybe choices we didn't make, roads we didn't go down, actions we didn't take. We could have helped somebody, but we didn't. We helped somebody, but it was for our own gain as opposed to theirs, right? Um, um, we, we are exactly where we, we put ourselves. And if you think about reincarnation, uh, it really does define or exemplify uh, how just and fair God is. Many times as a younger man and, and a kid, I can remember thinking, life isn't fair. Why me? Right? I have a brother who, uh, who I, uh, I, there were times when I swear he had a, a gray cloud over his head. Right? No matter what he did, he got in trouble. Right? Whether, whether it was his choice or his friends did something, but he just always seemed to be the guy that he had bad luck. Um, and uh, I remember thinking, man, life isn't fair for Jeff. Jeff, life isn't fair. You know, I do this and everything goes okay. He does this and he's, he, he's in trouble. Right? Um, simply, simply put, um, reincarnation explains why all of us right, started in the same place. Simple, 
and lacking knowledge. That first life we were created, right? Simple, lacking knowledge. Exactly the same, every one of us. But each one of us in this room are at different points of our spiritual journey, of our evolution. Whether we've had thousands of lives, hundreds of lives, we've each had our own experience in each one of those lives. And today, we are exactly where we put ourselves because of those choices. I'm not more blessed or less blessed. You guys are not more favored or less favored by God. You're simply in the position that your free will, right, that gift from God right, of free will has brought you to exactly where we are today based on those choices. Um, and those con these consequences are simply our reality today, whatever your situation is. Does that sound harsh or does that sound just? You sure? All right, good. I, I don't want to mess up. You know, there's a lot of people here tonight. All right, so I think a visual is in, in order, right? Again, our friend Mrs. Leo, or Dr. Leo, actually, I think. Um, I love this, right? I want, right? What do we want? We want a lot of stuff, right, versus I need, right? And it's a, it's a matter of balance, balancing. There's nothing wrong with wants. It's okay to desire and, and want things. But what do we really need and, and what's excess? And we all make that definition ourselves, right? We all have our own free will. We all have our own... Um, understanding of that. Um, but there's definitely a point where we want more than we need, we consume more than we need, and it creates excess. And that leads to, to problems, typically. All right, what do I got, two more hours? Yeah, okay. Right, I just want to make sure, I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to go too fast. So question 711 is this, right? Is the use of the fruits of the earth a right of all humans? In other words, the fruits of the earth, right? We all get up in the morning and we do what we do, right? We earn a living, we, we study, whatever it is. Do we have the right then to decide how we're gonna enjoy it, right? Can we, can we, can we is that considered a right? Are we being, are we being um, selfish if we want to enjoy those things? And the answer um, is, is, is not a yes or a no, it's that the right is simply a consequence of the need to stay alive, right? God would not impose a duty without granting them the means to fulfill it. So you have a responsibility to survive, right, to persevere. You have a responsibility to interact with society. You can't, you can't exit and go live under a bridge or on a deserted island so you don't have to deal with people, right? You have a, we're a social society, so we have this duty to interact. That's how we grow. That's how we help other grow. And in the process of living this life, uh, a consequence of, of this need to stay alive, um, we have the means to fulfill it by enjoying the fruits of the earth, um, however, whatever form that takes. Question 712 asks, well, okay then, towards what end has God made the enjoyment of material things attractive? Um, in other words, there's, there's some things out there that are really, really uh, out there, right? What, 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 to what end? Why are some of these things attractive? Because there's things that you are drawn to that aren't necessarily healthy. There's things that you are drawn to that are bad for others or for yourself, but they feel good, right? right? And the answer is awesome, right? To drive humans to the fulfillment of their mission, which is to survive and thrive and grow, but also to test them with temptation, right? So you all of a sudden uh, come into a lot of money or years of hard work pays off and you're successful financially. All of a sudden, you can do whatever you want, right? You have unlimited funds, right? Access to all kinds of things. What do you choose? Do you give in to vice? Do you give in to addiction? Do you take advantage of, of others for your own enjoyment? Right? Because now you have the money. You can you can you can buy whatever whatever hobby you want. Right? So you're tempted, right? Or do you avoid those things and, and still stay the path and follow the light? That's a great answer to that question. There, it, it's not a yes or a no. Question uh, 712, uh, the follow-up, right, is, is the perp what is the purpose of such temptation? Why, why does God do this to us, right? Why doesn't he just make it easy, right? What's the purpose? What do you think? You know. Yeah. To test them, to develop their reason, right? Because there's one thing to have a thought and be attracted to, to a certain path. Then there's another reaction or an intuition, right? We were born kind of with the law right here in our conscience, right? We, how many of you never know if you're doing something wrong? Come on, be honest. You know, right? I know. Well, most of the time. Sometimes I don't. Nah. Well, how does it go? 
right? Buzzer, wrong answer. We know, we know right from wrong. Especially, especially if you're studying, right? If you've, be, if you've been coming to a place like this, uh, weeks and years, and you read some of this stuff, and you educate your soul, right? You know, that's what stinks for me, right? Because I've been studying now for a while, I don't know, 14, 15 years. I've been coming here for, for almost 11 years now. Gabriella, my oldest, just turned 11, and we were here when she was in a, in a, you know, a bassinet almost, you know, six months old, I think, maybe younger, right? What stinks for me now is I still do things wrong. I still make mistakes, you know? I know, that surprises you, right? I know. I mean, it, should, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. And the thing that stinks is 15 years ago, I didn't know necessarily, right? Now I know, and it, it stinks, right? Because I know I'm messing up. It hurts more. There's more responsibility. But the answer here really makes sense. To develop their reason so that they may keep themselves from excess. The great news for me, and probably for you, right? The more I've studied, the more I've practiced, I don't make a lot of the same mistakes I used to. I still make mistakes, but little by little I'm making less mistakes or less severe mistakes, right? Um, and I don't have as many excesses uh, as I used to. Still have some, I'm working on them, um, but uh, it's getting better. So take home that message is don't beat yourself up, right? Making mistakes is par for the course. Making mistakes is part of the process. But learn from your mistakes. And when you put your head on the pillow at night, it's okay to think about your day. Say, man, I could have done this. I should have done that. And then let it go. Don't live in the past. It's done. It's over. But wake up the next morning thanking God for a new day, a new opportunity. And do your best to make today better than yesterday. Right? Try to follow Christ's example a little bit better than you did yesterday. And if you can do that little by little before you know it, um, you're like Valdo. Right? Just kidding. <laughs> That's my goal, yeah? So, how, how do you know the limit of what's necessary? How do you know? What do you think? Those who are sensible know it by intuition, right? Sensible. What's sensible? Right? I wonder if I'm sensible sometimes. But it makes sense. Intuition. Remember, you mentioned this, Valdo, early on, right? Our, our guardian, right? Our, our guardian spirit, our guardian angel, if you will. Yes, you have one. We all do. There's an argument to be made that there's a few of them in our life, right? but there's one key one that, that's there for you. Do they, do they stand over you and tell you what to do and, and guide you? No. And if you continue to make mistakes, are they still by you? Or they, they may have taken a little break, right? They may have drifted away, but they're there. As soon as you ask and as soon as you uh, uh, listen, they're drawn, right? They're no, they never leave you, per se, but they're not gonna pull your strings. You're not a puppet, right? You're not, a, you're not under their control, right? But that intuition is there, and that's them helping. But many recognize it at the cost of their own experience. What does that mean? You're human. You make mistakes. You learn over time. And whether you're, you study spiritism or other philosophies, right, that, that talk about growth, whether you study or not, Every day is a new experience. Every day is a chance to grow, right? And if you simply focus your intention on, on learning from those mistakes and having awareness for how you can be better, that intuition is going to get stronger. And little by little, you're going to listen to it more and more and be guided by it uh, more. So the take-home message, right, is all that's needed is provided. Do you believe that? Or do you feel like it's not around? You don't have to answer out loud, but think about that. If you don't believe it, the cards are stacked a little bit, yeah? Have faith. Would God give us life? Would he put us here with a mission to grow and evolve without supplying everything that we need? You may not know how to grab it. You may not know how to utilize it, but it starts with faith. Have faith that all that is needed is, is near us. It's within our grasp if we stop, listen, and follow um, our intuition better, right? The next take-home message is excess is, is, is not needed, but it exists to test us. So be thankful for the tests. Indulge if you must and learn from it, yeah? It's definitely there for a reason. If you can limit your excess, uh, you'll avoid temptation. And there's the test, yeah? How do you limit it? 
when anything and everything you want is, is fast and easy these days, right? It's easier said than done. And we're all living proof of that. We can all measure our, our, our failures and our successes, right, if we stop and think about it. And the goal simply is to, to lessen the failures uh, on a daily basis, little by little. So we can make it easy, right? You could just disappear from society. If, you, if, if there isn't, if there, whatever your vice is, if it's a bar, right, if it's a, if it's a fast car, if it's, it's, a, if it's a, doing wheelies on a motorcycle, right, whatever it, whatever it is, maybe it's betting on the ponies at the, at, the, at the dog track or something, I don't know. But whatever, whatever your temptation is, whatever your vice is, right, you could just disappear. I did that years ago. We're, we're probably talking, wow, what was I, 18, 19 years old? I don't know. But I got in with a bad crowd. I was doing some bad stuff. And I knew it, right? I just, man, this is crazy. What am I doing? Right? What would my grandfather think, right? He's probably turning over in his grave. So I didn't know what to do. I said, but if I leave town, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, it's going to go away. So I went and joined the Army. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, if, I don't know, maybe going to jail would have been worse. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, but I spent three and a half months at Fort Benning, Georgia. And I was in the, it was the National Guard, so it's not like I went away for a long time. But it was awesome because I disappeared for, for three and a half months and I totally cut ties with that crowd and I never talked to those guys again. And my life is, 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 is more and more on the straight and narrow um, ever since then. So that's one example of just disappearing. But what if, what if, what if we want to avoid temptation forever, right? Can, can we just go live under a bridge or that deserted island I talked about? Quit my job. Don't worry about money. Work for free because money's bad, right? Never enjoy a day in my life just devoted to service or in avoiding temptation. Is that the solution? Absolutely not, right? My short-term example worked for me at a time in my life when, when uh, I didn't know any better, and, and it worked, right? It got me, it got me away from a crowd I, I shouldn't have been hanging out with. Um, but long-term, we, we have to face our, our temptations. We have to face society. Um, and we just have to be careful not to make property or money our goal. We should make our goal to serve. Help others as much as we can. Each day, find a way to, to smile uh, at somebody. Um, we've talked about this before, but there's, there's lots of stories out there of people that were planning to commit suicide, right? They left their house to go jump off a bridge or, or something. And what stopped them was a stranger simply smiled, right? Just smiled, said hello. You can save a life just with a smile. And what happens when you smile at a stranger? Don't you feel good when you do it? So you're helping yourself, too. Smiles are awesome. So the real property that, that, that we leave this earth with, right, when we die, is not, it's not money. It's not property in the sense of houses and cars and shiny things. It's, it's our moral development. It's... it's what we do at our lowest times, right, that define us. When you don't have enough money, when you're down on your luck, when your boss is just a jerk and, and you want to smack him, right, or her, you don't do it, right? You, you step it up. You, you have faith. You believe that, that, that it's going to get better. And you find ways to make it better within the confines of the law, within the confines of, of, uh, of moral uh, 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 examples like Christ gave us. You turn the other cheek, you love your enemy. That doesn't mean you invite him to dinner, yeah. right? And you don't have to give him a hug and, and, and let him in, right? But you pray for them. You wish them success, right? You forgive them for their adversity that they've given you, um, and you don't hate them. You love them. And you try your best to serve your fellow man, just like Christ did when he walked the earth, right? That's all it takes. <laughs> it's that simple, right? It sounds so easy sometimes, but it's so hard. But make your goal to serve. And as much as you can, try to detach yourself from your presence. I'm at a point now where, where, where don't get me wrong, I love my house. I like my car. Um, I, you know, I like my hobbies and whatever. But, but the, the cool thing for me, where I, where I feel like I'm growing, is if it were all taken from me today, and I had my wife and my babies, right, and my health, I'm okay. I'll start over. I can always make more money. You know, it's okay. All right? And if I don't make more money, I, I, it's okay. I, I, 
I'll make it work, right? But there was a time in my life when I valued my things more than I did other things, right? I can't tell you how many, how many um, personal relationships with family or friends that were less valuable to me than success, right? Fences, I'm still cleaning up, right, because of my selfishness. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, right? Don't get me wrong, I didn't, I didn't kill anybody, I didn't steal, right? But I put material things over people. And it was easy to do, because I was on a mission. I was chasing money, right? Um, and I never had enough, and I was never happy. And then came a time when I lost everything, and I started over. And this, this rings true today. If I were to lose everything, I'd be okay, because I, I've lost this, this attachment to possessions. Um, what's important for all of us, right, is regardless of where we are in this journey, is to try to serve others and grow spiritually. And the way you do that is not by gaining material things. When I die, when you die, what you're taking with you is your intellect, your character, and all of the experiences, good and bad, uh, that's impacted your spirit, right, via your para-spirit. Everything else stays. And you wind up coming back, hopefully, right, with, by the grace of God, sooner, later, um, having healed from those mistakes to some degree with a plan to advance. That's it, though. All those other things stay here. They're not important. As much as we value them, as much as we need them, they're truly not important. But this doesn't mean that you have to go without. There's nothing wrong with having things, as long as they're not your primary goal, is to possess and, and have access. Simply remember that our mission, okay, is when abundance is provided to you, know how to employ it usefully without pride, ego, or attachment. When you don't have enough, right, when abundance is absent, learn to live without resentment or sorrow. Just love. Love yourself. Love others. Forgive and smile. Thank you for your time and attention. I appreciate it.